Welcome and all. Welcome back to another episode of the wonderful The Arsenio ZSL podcast. Today is a very unfortunate special, but it's something that I just love to speak about because this is what ended up creating such a profound brand, a huge brand that is recognized around the world for ESL learning, English as a second language learning, and so many other things. Well, let's just put it this way, people. I'm going to be taking you down a memory lane, uh, right? There are a lot of people who do not know my story as much, uh, and, but to be honest with you, I've been living out here in Thailand for 10 years, and uh, I'm going to make it a now, but the egregiousness of Thai people, and again, Seeing from the lens that I had at the time, the perspective I had at the time, I would consider Thailand to be a homogeneous community, meaning everyone thinks the same, kind of like communism, China, North Korea, you know, you, you know, all those, you, you know, the, all those countries and stuff like that. So every individual, and well, I want to say every, about 90% individuals that I came across between my two jobs, my first jobs from 2013 to 2014, I, have to, I would have to say 90% of the individuals were racist in some way towards my skin tone. It's funny because my students were actually darker than me, right? Me being half Puerto Rican, my students were absolutely darker than me. But I would always blame the students rather than blaming the parents. Because to be honest with you, if I see a racist parent, I know what I'm already going to get as a child. There are some ch children that look at me in awe. There are some children that look at me and they're scared. It's all predicated based on what the parent teaches them and the right from wrong, right? And considering that this is Thailand and just about money buys everything. And even with the richest people in the world, they send them to international schools and they're still just so demented and just so, just the fascism is just on another level, right? Not all of them. This is basically the things that I had to, do with living out here in this country. And so fast forward into 2015 and seeing the marketing uh, director of the company at the time say, you know, to be, to be honest with you, Arsenio, it's very hard to market someone who's black. And seeing how that was basically in the consciousness of this place that I was working at, so many other companies who showed so much praise to the, the teacher from the Netherlands and just gave me dirty looks. Uh, the women who would consistently always hold their noses, clutch their purses, sit away from me, get away from me, still happens in present day, to be honest with you. Hell, even today, I was actually walking out of the gym. And no, it's not because I stink, because they walk by all their other Thai people and everyone else perfectly fine. But when they see me, they hurry up and take two big steps to the side. This is how, this is the ignorance. And some people don't know any better. And some people don't even know that they're doing it. They could be totally oblivious to their ignorance, right? And so I had to consider all the things, but more importantly, I had to overcome a lot of that. Being denied 200 jobs for being black, that you black man, low class pimp, black people are dirty, black people are stink, black people can't be teachers, only white men can be teachers. I've heard all the ridiculousness out here in this country, right? And that's what created my story, my personal development podcast, born 2016, January 3rd. And me overcoming so many things in my life that I had to overcome at that time while making it an inconvenience for a lot of other people. Yeah, that's right. I destroyed a lot of, well, already broken relationships with some of the older Caucasian teachers from different countries around the world, Ireland, America, UK, you name it. And this is simply because, well, they ended up trying, they were so jealous of me because I was the talk of the language center. After, of course, the lady started brown nosing me because she knew that I was actually the best at what I do. And what ended up happening were just a number of different things, right? And a lot of the teachers began hating me because they felt like I conformed to my own self or I was too good enough to talk to them. But in fact, I just didn't want to be around the whiny bitch club anymore. I didn't want to walk in there and have people just zap away my energy. I remember there was one thing like a basin Right. And I'm thinking like a big water, a body of water. That's what we call it in America, a basin. The next thing you know, I realized that these guys are arguing and then they ended up like just like being very rude to me in regards to me not knowing basin in British English. But see, I couldn't stick up for myself at the time. And that same guy that actually got mad at me ended up becoming the head teacher, took away all my work because he felt like I wasn't capable of teaching the things that I was teaching. 
you could only imagine. And this wasn't even Thai. Okay, so you guys knowing exactly what I had to go through the first, let's say, four years, okay, almost five years of living here and then having to make a name for myself still, even working with some of the most ignorant motherfuckers and having the people at the different banks, the biggest banks in Thailand, you know, government and private looking at me as if I was just a, another guy, a jag, or looking at me as if, yeah, black. This was the story that I recreated and it ended up becoming my life. It wasn't until I started getting healed in 2020 when I finally overcame that. Thus, my friend at the time turned fiance, turned now wife came into my life. No way if she had come into my life before 2020, there was no way that I would have kept her around because my mindset was all victim. And so I tell you that to lay the foundation, to tell you that even though these things rarely happen to me, and when they do, I never take it personal. I don't take responsibility for other people's upbringing. I don't take responsibility for the dirty looks. Uh, I do not communicate with old people. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. you guys are like, oh my God, you hate old people. You're, you're a genderism. I don't know what you want to call it. In this country, old people... Even in this neighborhood, when I walk out of my house, they have the most disgusting looks on their faces when they look at me. So I ignore them. I don't look at them. I don't talk to them. And if you say, well, Arsenio, not all people, I would have to say people over 50 are homogenous, no doubt. If you look at what's happening right now in Thai politics, I could tell you right now, all the people who do not want this country to move forward are all over 50. And so I tell you that because... Yes, I am aware, but I am not inundated in other people's lack of perspective and their monolithic perspectives and their myopic point of view when seeing life as white or black, white good, black bad. You could keep that bullshit for yourself. Me, I always tell myself with the emergence of Netflix and I think Black Panther, Chadwick Bosman, rest in peace. Um, he had no idea what he had done with that movie and how instrumental it was, especially across the continent of Asia, in terms of us giving ourselves a better image. Our image was completely ripped apart in the 80s and 90s by gangster rap turned violence all over the streets of Los Angeles, right? And so this is what people saw on TV, and this is what people equated Black people to. And so now with the reemergence and saying, oh my God, you know, although it's a movie, it goes to show you that there are different cultures that blend in from each other. You know, they blend in with one another from around the world and stuff like that. And then with the emergence of Netflix and people began realizing like, oh my God, this is okay. You know, black people are really funny. So the younger generation coming into my today's story, the younger generation, I love them. They don't act stupid. Do I teach them? No. Okay, I probably teach about, man, I would have to say anyone in high school, Oh my God, do I teach anyone in high school? Yeah, I teach actually a freshman. Uh, they call her, they say grade nine, uh, Mateom Sam, meaning uh, the third Mateom, meaning it's like this primary and secondary out here in Thailand, just like England, right? They call it Pratom and Mateom, right? She's in Mall Sam. She's cool as shit. I love her and she's awesome, just as all my other ones are between ages 11 and 14. But that doesn't say anything because I work at a tutorial center where they pay and their parents pay quite a bit of money for them to get some tutoring. This isn't being in a school where the last school I taught at, I would lose my voice every day because my students would just say, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you right in front of my face. These were the, and again, who do you blame? Do I blame the children? No, I blame this sorry ass, of course, parents and stuff like that. And so going into today's story, this is what had happened. There's a student out here in Bangkok, Thailand. I got this, um, what is it? I got, as a matter of fact, I got this video from one of my favorite students in the world who I taught at the tutorial center where everything was just so bad about eight years ago. She is amazing now. She's getting ready to graduate university. I still keep in touch with her. Her English is perfect. She sent me this. And she's like, oh, hell no, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me hurry up and see what's going on. So you got this Thai student jumping 
you know, behind this, I'm going to have to say it, black teacher. It has everything to do with black because considering that I've been denied over 250 jobs in this country for being black. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Even with my resume, which completely obliterates just about everyone out there, they still do not hire me. And so that's why I made my own brand online. And now I just tell these folks, especially in this neighborhood, they're like, oh, I want to learn English. I'm like, man, I ain't got time for your shit. I'll be honest with you, I ain't got time to hold your hand and everything. I'm trying to spur people on to success. I ain't got time for no bullshit. All right, this is not kindergarten. I apologize. You can go find someone else that's going to hold your hand, but I'm not a hold a hand, motherfucker. Now, going back to this girl, jumping up and down, like as if she was punching the teacher in the back of her head. And then she flipped the bird. Double, double middle finger. And I'm like, oh, shit. Well, you know, man, my students in 2000, not saying that that's egregious. I mean, America, whew, America, they get their fucking full on fights. Hey, did you guys see those videos out there in America? Full fuck fights. OK, but fuck fights are happening out there in America. Shit, they shoot people in America. And that's not to defend anybody because you would expect the continent of Asia Let's say minus Cambodia. I don't know anything about them folks. Uh, you, yeah, just minus Cambodia. Oh, and minus China. Yeah, okay, minus a lot of folks. But I expect better. From Western society, I expect nothing less. What I see on YouTube is exactly what I've always believed in regards to Western society. But out here, man, 2014, man, I had them little bitch-ass kids, man. They were like in third grade flipping me off, like nine of them in the middle of the class, only two students out of the 42 in that classroom. I still remember their nicknames, Winston and, well, oh, forgot the other one. But those are the only two that wanted to learn. One sat by the window to my left, the other one near the door in the back to my right. And guess what? Everyone else was the fucking hoodlums. It's like fucking teaching out of opportunity school. I could tell you one thing. If I see a shitty child, I know exactly what the parent brings. So am I mad at the child? No, I'm looking at him like, yo, this guy's future is bleak, man. You know what I mean? I mean, but I myself was dealing with so many things like I, you know, so many things on a personal level, too. And so nonetheless, going back to this girl who were flipping the birds, what ended up happening and happening is the shocking and racist comments from her despicable mother. And it's crazy because this is what, what ended up happening. The mother of the student who actually uploaded the clip to Twitter defended her daughter before exploding into a racist rant. Quote, this is not my daughter's fault. She, the teacher, is a fool, but dares to teach my daughter. Look at you, Ngopa, meaning Negrito. In Colombia and South America, calling someone Negrito is nice. Here in Thailand, it's called Nico. Nico is just about the equivalent as the worst word in the dictionary that you could call all Black people around the world. She said, my daughter told me about her. She said her teacher is stupid and should go back to the jungle. This is the daughter that was jumping up and back up and down in the back of this teacher. I could tell you this right now. Eight years ago, this would go unnoticed. Let's look at the bright side. Eight years ago, this would go unnoticed. One of the most openly racist new paper, newspapers out here that's very pro-dictatorship called Bangkok Post, they're not even going to pick this up because they too are some of the most blatant racists. About eight years ago, there would be a there would always be racist ass articles, followed by racist ass comments from a lot of the 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 nasty foreigners that come here to uh, obviously sexual exploitation and stuff like that, and they would post that probably three times a week. Not only that, every news outlet, News Three, News Seven, News This, News That, I could go back into their archives from 2013 to 2016. Every single goddamn week, there was always a video of a black man in cuffs, and apparently he was doing drugs, but never did they ever put the videos of the white men who were having sex with children. Never did they, ever. Going back to Bangkok Post, they never did this. Now, Bangkok Post is never going to pick this up and talk about this because they don't want 
black people to look like the heroes in society. They want them to always look like the lower ones. However, there are a lot of other websites that pick this up almost immediately. Big shout out to all Thai people on TikTok who are like, oh my God, I am ashamed. I'm so sorry. I'm so this, I'm so that. I'm like, oh my God, man. That is called change. Let's go. Seven years ago, those comments would be totally reversed. Saying black this, black is disgust, and this, oh my goodness gracious, you have no idea. Predominantly coming from Thai, uh, Thai women. I never had a racist Thai man. You would probably only see some of the nasty racist uh, internet keyboard warriors that would say, oh, you guys come here for drugs and all that other bullshit. Uh, but that was, again, back during the very racist times where they, you know, black people would be verbally attacked on the streets from Thai people between 2013, about 2016, probably even prior to that. But to see the change and to see the apology and see in some of these bigger news outlets who have a predominant Caucasian reader base those to show you that, hey, we're going to have to call all you guys out on your bullshit. This isn't just one ignorant ass child and oh, oh, I'm sorry, racist ass child and her trash ass parents. This is going all the way up the ladder to the very top in this country. This is all the biggest companies in Thailand. The CP, openly racist Chinese Thai man, Central, openly racist Thailand. Uh, you know, his son is actually an actor. I met him before. Uh, they call him Peach and he's actually a really nice guy. He's actually... A very, very nice guy. He spoke to him for literally 30 minutes. One of my students was actually training them at the time. Wonderful down to earth. Not going to say that his grandpa is. His grandpa is a, is a pig. All right. And if we go all the way around to the richest families out here, and not to say this, but the ones who are more of fair complexion, they believe, going back to my podcast yesterday, that they could treat anyone the w whatever way they want to. These are the ones that are the openly racist ones. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Ready to plug into the future? Join myself, Sean Leahy. And me, Andrew Maynard. On Modem Futura, where we explore the technologies shaping our futures. We bring the experts, the insights, and a whole lot of curiosity to every episode of Modem Futura as we boldly go where <laughs> no one else has gone. So join us as we navigate the intersection of innovation and humanity uncovering the stories that will define our collective futures. Subscribe to Modem Futura wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you there. See you then. And if you go on Instagram, and if you end up getting a whole bunch of tie this, tie that, you're going to see on a lot of Thai women's Instagrams, any Thai woman who has 50 to 100,000 followers on IG, and their fair skin, they're going to have multiple photos of white men, blonde hair, blue eyes, and posing with them, followed by thousands of comments saying, oh, white man, low mark, meaning very handsome. The moment they put a photo of a black man on there, everyone's going to be saying, why did you put a photo of a black man on your Instagram? I'm calling out the bullshit and the ignorance of everyone in this country. That is all. Looking at, and again, is this an isolated incident? Is this only happening in Thailand? No, America's the father of this. This this disease ended up just, you know, just trickling all around the world. Although China has always been known for this because they look down on the, and if you look at photos back in, uh, what is it, the 19th century of China, the darker Chinese would always, you know, uh, hold the little three-wheel carriage or two-wheel carriage and transport the fair skinned ones around. If you were dark, you were considered to be poor. If you were fair, you were rich. I mean, we could probably go back to ancient Egypt and all that stuff. In societies such as Japan and Korea, amongst each other, there's never really a problem, but the ones who are half red, it's blatant. Korea, it's pretty bad. Shout out to my Koreans, I love y'all. Y'all on my podcast, okay, I love y'all. And I know y'all saw some shit. My Taiwanese, oh, I love y'all. I don't know much about Taiwan, so I can't say nothing about Taiwan. So big shout out to y'all. I love y'all. Japanese, y'all listen to me. I think you guys are a little bit more open-minded, especially the newer generation. Older generation, I can't really speak of them. 
I haven't spoke face to face with anyone from Japan in about five years. That was one of my students who I was teaching TOEFL ITP out here in Bangkok. She was amazing. I love more we can talk for two hours. Boom, gone. And I would get blamed by the bitches. I was actually, well, hey, you guys are talking too much. I said, shut the fuck up, get out of my business. All right, this is my Japanese, folks. Okay, get the fuck out of my face. Anyways, um, Koreans, I haven't spoken to Koreans since 2011. All right. I met a couple of Chinese. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, you can listen to that podcast. It's called Arsenio's ESL Podcast. Type when from China. When as in W-E-N. Go listen to what she says and how she says it. And you're going to see that this kind of like that little superiority. I knew her for just a couple of months. She was actually pretty cool. Uh, she was a little bit of an ass. And you can hear that little bit of an ass tone that she had. But other than that, before that, I hadn't met anyone from China since 2011. And is this because, oh, you know, because, you know, you live over here, over there. No, it's the fact that, let's be honest, Singaporean Chinese, Indonesian Chinese. I was in Bali, Indonesia. I came downstairs the day that I was going to get ready to do my competition. It was a fully booked place. It was breakfast. And right when I walked in, all the Indonesian Chinese looked at me in absolute disgrace. As if, what is this black man doing here? It was the most uncomfortable feeling I had. You know, taking a plane from, as a matter of fact, Seoul, South Korea to Singapore in 2017, that was a very, 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 that, that was a very uncomfortable feeling that I had. There were children that would just look at me and you could just see it. I'm like, oh my God, God, I feel bad for these folks. Bless her soul. I hope she finds something. I hope she opens her mind at somehow, some point and do not learn the shit that you've been taught by anyone. Please unlearn and relearn again. And so I tell you guys this to just question your ability. Question and stick up for the people around you who do you feel that are being marginalized in any way, shape, or form. This is what I've done for such a long time. This is why I have the voice I do today. You know, this is why I naturally gravitate towards people who have very high energy and thus I do not... I'm not around people who are, I don't know, under a level of 300 in consciousness. I'm at the acceptance realm. And that's the last time I checked it. In 2020, I was at 300. So Jesus, I might, I may be at 400. And this is probably why my wife keeps saying, oh, I want you to go meet friends. I'm saying, I can't. All right. I am of a different level. I'm living in a different vast galaxy within this earth. Okay, within this country, within this city, within this home. I'm another breed. I'll do whatever I can. I promise. But I can't promise you. So nonetheless, if you ever feel that someone is being marginalized or you feel like someone's being racially discriminated against, how can you make and make a difference to stick up for them? This happens all the time. And no, you don't have to do it for views and clicks in YouTube and all those fake videos and the fake shorts on YouTube and all. No, 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 no. Do it for the sake of your soul. Do it for the sake of human to human. See, her friend uploaded that video. And everybody was very mad. But the friend didn't understand, or maybe she understood. Maybe, maybe she just wanted to upload the video and say, ah, ha, ha, you know, thought it was going to be friend, you know, just young, stupid ass kids. Or maybe her friend uploaded the video and said, you know what? I'm going to expose the fuck out of you and everybody else. I watch people on Netflix every fucking day. And these black and brown and cappuccino latte people are fucking funny and amazing. And this, you have no right. Her friend, of course, put in the caption. Oh, you don't like studying English, huh? I'm going to expose the fuck out of you. She didn't put that part, okay? But at the same time, because that happened, this could ultimately create change because we're calling people out. You would never see a child like this doing this behind any sort of white teacher, whether it be from South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, Ireland, Scotland, you, you, you name it, yeah, you know, England, America, they would never do that. They would never do such a thing. Because again... To those folks, you got to be very, very nice to them because they are white. But when it comes to black, they're immediately lower because it's always equated with being poor. That is what a lot of people, and that 
has been perpetuated in the human consciousness for centuries. And so by that child doing that, we could finally call all these racists out for what it is. And I, I just think it's a fantastic thing. I think this was an amazing event, although it's a very negative event. It's an amazing event that had taken place and that can finally expose a lot of the nasty racist ties that are out there and just call them out for their bullshit. Seeing all those apology comments for a racist ass child who says she should go back to a to the jungle. I'm like, damn, if she got to go back to the jungle, all your top people in the country got to go back to the jungle based on what the fuck they represent. Those are some of the most demonic motherfucking enemies in all of the world. And so seeing her say that, and I'm just like, thank you for exposing her. Let's call all these racist ass motherfuckers out for what they are then. Let's go. This is a great story that needs to be had. Remember, and I'm, before I top off this podcast, in January of 2000, uh, 2020, I was looking for other part-time jobs because I was working for the job that I currently work for right now, but they weren't giving me work based on the color of my skin. This lady, P. Um, she didn't like me at all. She's like, are you sure you can teach that? Are you sure you can teach that? Are you sure you can teach that? I don't like being placed in labels, so that's why I'm kind of like, no, fuck that. You keep it for yourself, especially you're just wasting my time if you want me to teach that class at this time. No fucking thanks. Luckily, that girl and the other ones and everyone else has been just, you know, they're all gone. And now I have two amazing ladies who are very understanding and they love me like I do my next breath and I love them. But at that time, I was looking for a part time job. And I look for a place called English Parks. And I think I may have said this before. And I remember I got in touch with him and I was I was referred to by Steve. Steve couldn't even write. Steve didn't even know the, no offense to him, but if you're a teacher and you're 70 years old, you don't know. Maybe it's an honest mistake, but I've seen multiple errors in his writing. He doesn't know then from then, T-H-E-N versus T-H-A-N. I'm like, but you're working at English Parks and you're getting paid double than I am. And they accept, they, I mean, but again, Steve is white. And so knowing who he, you know, knowing what that was and who they were, they were like, oh, Arsenio, well, where do you work? Okay, you know, that might be a little bit of a problem trying to say that it might be a little bit of a problem. Me working in the same building, something ridiculous. And then they're like, oh, can you come and do a teaching demo? And I'm like, a teaching demo? They do this to see if you could teach. And again, I get it. For international schools around the world, they say, hey, can you come in? You have to try out for a teacher position. Motherfucker, I ain't trying out for a goddamn thing. I'm good, thank you. If you don't know who I am now, I don't need to tell you who I am. No offense, no offense. And I'm saying that not from an egotistical standpoint or from a braggadocious way, but I'm telling you that from, no, you're not going to make me do a demo when you're allowing everyone else and you're giving them jobs very quickly just because of who they, you know, just because of the color of the skin. It's not how it works. I sent them videos of me coaching at some of the biggest companies in Thailand. And I'm like, okay, you can let me know and we'll go from there. But these, this, these are the companies that I've taught at. So there go my videos. And I, in my head, I said, I'm gonna give you a 12 hour grace period. If you don't respond in 12 hours, you're gone. They didn't respond in 12 hours, gone. 22 months later, November of 2021, I got an email. And I, I think I read it out to you guys already. Saying, hey, are you still around? I'm like, ah, ha, 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 ha. I said, I'm sorry, you cannot afford me. No, thank you. Best of luck in your search for another teacher. But you're just flat out undeserving of me. So with those two things being said and everything it just goes to show you that i do stick up and have the dignity to put my foot down and do what's right and i'm not going to sell myself for just a couple of dollars i would be a goddamn fool to go back to a place 22 months later to say oh you now want me all of a sudden and i pointed that out in the email i said oh that is a shocker you want, oh, uh, you know, what? I haven't heard from you in 22 months. It is so good to hear from you, but no, thank you. Best of luck. And so that is my entire story. That's the sub story. 
And I love that we're finally calling people out. And it's so funny. They're like, according to the students, they would apologize to the teacher today and would share the video of the apology on. So motherfucker, fuck you. Don't <laughs> listen. If someone shows you who they are, believe them. You're now being forced to apologize and posting it on Twitter the most horrendous place where all the undesirables of society go on. Really? And you might put a fucking monkey emoji. <laughs> okay, get the fuck out of here. All right, that's a bullshit-ass apology. And this is why I don't teach in schools. But it's unfortunate because I really had a lot of faith. That's one student out of, let's just say, a million plus. But boy, I know how schools are. And thinking about the future, I tell my wife, I'm like, uh, once we have a child, to be honest with you, this is why I don't want them going to a government or a private school. They're trash. Government is pure ass trash shitballs. Fucking learning about garbage ass Thai culture. Get the fuck out of here. That shit ain't going to help them, especially when the world is burning at that time. Fuck no. Private schools, fuck off. It's international schools, but they're very expensive. So then what? Now we're trying to look at different options. It's like, well, I don't want her or him to go through that garbage on an everyday basis because guess what? They're going to be calling my child a Nico too. And do you blame the child? No, it's the parents who are trash. And I see the motherfuckers every single fucking time. And so I'm glad that we had that conversation. Had to get that all out there. And I feel a hell of a lot better. Man, I hope you guys enjoyed this again. Would love to hear some of your stories. Connect with me on IG or Sydney's ESL podcast. And I'll be seeing you guys next episode. Over and out.